All right, so this one I'm going to show you how you can take face sets from a voxel sculpt and then quad remesh them into individual little sections. All right, so we need a mesh to actually work with here first. Let's go into sculpt mode. And we're going to do this. Hit R, Control R, remesh it. I'm going to turn wireframe off now. Uh, turn on symmetry for X. I'm going to use the grab tool real quick just to pull this thing apart. Set fall off to projected so we can go and grab through the mesh. You can see it's going to grab all the way through now. We could just move this thing out like so. And all I'm going to do is mesh filter, set it to smooth, and then kind of smooth it all down real quick, like so. Okay, click and drag to the right. Use clay strips, and I'm just going to start uh, doing a little bit of sculpting in here real quick, just get some different shape going. This is actually a kind of a challenging way of doing this, but also the fastest and easiest way of doing it that I've found so far to just split off those face sets into um, quad mesh basically. So we have this shape going, let's do that mesh filter and smooth it a little. We got something like this right now. We wanna turn or create face sets. Use the face set tool, set it projected as well. And once again, you can click, you can create a face set. It goes all the way through. So if I make that a little bit larger, you can see if I click more, it's gonna keep adding more face sets. But if I hold control, I can pull Hold control and click, right? You can pull one through. Uh, in our case here, I'm going to go ahead and hold control on that one. I like that better. So we'll use that. All right, now let's say I want to split this thing up into like panels or something. That's what we're basically doing here. We're going to do our face sets first. Like so. And this can get a little bit interesting because what ends up happening is like, you have to make sure these face sets are right. And then you also can't always predict exactly how they're going to split apart. And you have to kind of practice with it and get the hang with it. But um, you'll be able to do this fairly well. And it's great for just, you know, creating a uh, kind of like a shell, quad shell mesh or whatever. And so I'm just going to make that a little bit larger there. You can see I had to select all the way through on. Whoops. Yeah, let's turn that off. Set it back to sphere. We'll just do that for now. And I was planning on going all the way through with that, but we'll leave it like this for now. I think it's kind of interesting. So the main thing is, is as you're creating your face sets, you want to try to get it nice and clean as possible. And higher resolution can help on this. So if you want to remesh a little bit higher, you don't have to go too crazy with it, but a little bit nicer of a um, of a selection will definitely go a long way. And the reason is, is if you generate little errors on this, even if it's perfectly smooth looking, it won't quad remesh very well. Okay. And there's a good odd chance quad remesh doesn't get through everything right anyways to begin with. So we're going to have to just be extra cautious when doing this. Like if you want a straight edge here, try to get it straight, you know, with um, well placed like pixel art looking kind of edges. Also, if you're using a tablet, Turn on pressure sensitive size. You can use that to narrow in on little areas with low pressure. High pressure still does big selections. Really nice to use that one sometimes. So you can just go through, use large pressure, right? Or you know, heavy hand or whatever. And then later on, you can use a really light hand and try to even these things up exactly the way you need them. Right on the edge. All right. So we can do this all day trying to get this just right. Uh, it is important. It's an important step in my opinion. I'm going to do something a little bit different though. Not guaranteed to work out for you. So I'm going to use mesh filter. There's relax face sets in here. I'm going to click and drag to the right. You see it goes ahead and smooths it all out. What we're looking at though is that these little areas that kind of crunch together like this into like weird triangles and stuff, they don't usually work out very well. But if you do smooth it like this, a lot of times what you can do is you can just hit control R and remesh it and you'll get a little bit of a cleaner line usually, and then you can smooth that one out too. Uh, so it just depends on how you want to work with this. If your edges are mostly like nice, smooth, curved shapes like this, this works well. When you start creating T junctions, that's when things go a little bit hayward as well. So you can imagine like if we had, um, a, and that's a kind of a bad thing too, because that's what a lot of sci-fi design likes is like, um, you got little intersections that create like a little T shape. That's where things can go really hayward as well. 
And also when you have those types of intersections and use things like mesh filter smooth or even the smooth tool with the uh, face set tool, you'll get this kind of pinching effect going on. This can be really hard to kind of correct as well without um, remeshing it and then going in and using the face set tool and trying to redo it again. Now you got to re-smooth everything basically. So it's a really tricky little process by the end of it, but it's often, I think it's worth it. If you do like a really awesome sculpt and you do this towards the end and just manually brush it up, it's probably your better bet. But for now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where we were and we're going to do, I kind of want to do another section here. Let's press H. H or Shift H, depending on which version of Blender you're on. I'm going to smooth just this section here like that. So hold Shift. All right, that's another way of tackling that problem, but it should still shift it around a little bit. Anyways, the better you get this whole selection thing going, the better off you'll be, basically. You can also do like Shift H, Shift H, or H, and then come up here and invert selections as well. All right, so if you ever got to correct something, there, that's one way of doing that. And also another really weird thing that happens is that sometimes Blender loses its mirror, basically, like when you're selecting face sets. So you might have to symmetrize. In our case, you know, maybe I'll do negative to positive X, which it's already set on by default. That line shouldn't matter too much. It should be okay. Okay. And so there we go. We have that done. Now, this is where you need the face set operator add-on. And it's in the extension section. But once you install this add-on, you'll get these menu items here. You can turn face sets into materials. Click that. You'll see it updates. All right. Now, in object mode, we'll see the materials. In sculpt mode, we'll see the face set and materials. So we have options here. We can either turn face sets off, right, with the drop down somewhere up here. And then, um, but we can also switch it from materials to single. We might do something like that as well. Okay. So back in object mode now, we'll just have a pure white mesh. Um, we'd have to go to material preview to see, no, material preview, to see the uh, materials like that now. All right, so you have those options available to you and it'll be set up like so. If you were to update this, right, and the face sets and the materials were still selected, this is where it gets a little confusing. It, you would see a different color. It wouldn't be accurate. You would actually need a, um, update the face sets to materials and it'll actually update it right just wanted to point that out because it's a little bit goofy it's a little bit weird but we'll go with this for now and so just be careful with it basically and now that we have this done we can go ahead and just try to make sure we don't have any major errors so like if i smooth that out you see we'll get this kind of result here also, something else I kind of skipped that I didn't realize I, I didn't uh, point out. Usually you want to check fixed poles, right? Kind of just skip that. It'll probably still work on, on this, but fixed poles will oftentimes create a better mesh, in my opinion, for these setups here like this, all right? But we'll go with this for now. With that out of the way, we want to split it up. Oh, we quad remesh it first. Quad remesh, we can use material, turn that one off, symmetrize across X. If we want to use adaptive quad size, we can. I'm going to turn it off. I don't think it, I haven't really played around with it too much on and off. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I just want to set the resolution here to something that's useful. It could be 10,000, it could be 20,000, you know, set it to what you want. And then let's see what happens if I do this right now at 20K. You can see how it splits it up. It does lose its shape a little bit, right? Just a tiny little bit, it's gonna lose that shape. But it's like a very minor amount. It's almost perfect um, for the most part. However, it may not be perfect everywhere. You gotta be a little cautious. Some of these things like this, you can use loop tools perhaps and um, maybe relax it or something or um, use machine tools and straighten it, you know, Alt A to straighten it and just line it up. Or you could even probably GG twice and set that one up to GG twice one way, GG twice back the other way. Easy. You just want to make sure it's all cleaned up. It's nice and good before you go off doing anything else. 
And you can see we had symmetry on when I did that. For whatever reason, this side didn't update back. And if you have like little weird poles and stuff on the edges, you might want to fix those. Uh, for the most part, this one looks pretty good. So because of the way this mesh is, like with the materials, in edit mode, you can select it all, hit P, and you can separate by materials, split it apart. Okay, so let's just take one for right now. We're going to try doing a solidify modifier, sending it out like so. Okay, now we can grab that mesh and add a bevel. Shift Q with um, hard ops to get that menu, by the way. The bevel modifier, we do two segments, shape profile of one, we get this, okay? And then after this, we should be able to add a subdivision. Now this one, Okay, select this one, press A in this case. You can select all the other ones. This will be the active element, control L. We can copy modifiers and do that like so. All right, now it's not gonna have a, it's not always gonna be perfect. You still might get some little mesh uh, pieces that, or the meshes just might not meet up with each other, or you might have little holes in here, things like that going on. It's possible, it can happen. You can always try, um, Playing around with the solidify, you can crease the inner and outer sections as well. So if you want to do creases, you potentially could do creases as well. In our case, it's not, I don't think it's going to help us much. Something I found that's kind of interesting and kind of fun you can do is you could select, um, let's say we select this one, we add a displacement modifier. So we can inflate these as well, basically using a displacement modifier. Just hold shift while dragging. too high yeah so just hold shift use a very low value um, you can add displacement modifier do that i'm gonna press a Control l copy modifiers and you can have all of these selected with a displacement modifier like we just did where we copied it um, we can hold alt and click here and hold down shift at the same time and we can drag it around a little bit and try to get them to meet up just like so all right and you still may have to push things around a little bit to get them to work out. And, you know, if you have a bevel taking place that's kind of nasty like that, you could definitely take the bevel modifier and you could change it to something higher, like angle amount, like um, 80 degrees or something, right? 88, something like that. Control L, copy modifiers again. Should be good to go. All right, so a little bit trickier, but still super useful. Also, if you don't want the shell like on the inside, solidify just check only rim is here so you don't always have to you know render those necessarily but if you want something to like fall apart and this all pops off of a chassis or something that's a cool way of doing it and this also you don't if you apply all of this beforehand uh, what you can do is you can uh, set up face sets for this individual piece so that you can only work on the outside shell and then you can actually go sculpt on top of this if you wanted to as well. Or even before you add the modifiers, you could probably sculpt on it if you preserve the uh, outer outer limits here, per perhaps, you know. So, yeah, I'm going to let you have fun with, you know, creating this kind of mesh. Leave it up to you to take this info and run with it. But it's definitely possible. It's really cool that you can do it. And it's just something that, um, you know, take a little while to get used to doing, I guess. But ultimately, it's really not that bad give these a little bit more realistic kind of coloring here. You can see you definitely can make a kind of an interesting, you know, maybe like hard surface design that's semi hard surface or like more organic in nature anyways, but a lot, a lot quicker to split it up this way, I think than some of the ways I've shown in the past. So that's why I wanted to show this off. Uh, it's kind of the newer, better way of doing it, I think. And it, uh, it just works well. All right. So I'll see you in the next one. Take care.